In this example, we'll learn how to write the most reasonable Lewis structure for a given neutral molecule. The question asks us to write the most reasonable Lewis structure for the compound HONC. This is part one of a two-part video. In part one, you'll see how we can determine the possible Lewis structures for this molecule HONC. The first thing we need to do is find the total number of valence electrons in the molecule. We can use the position on the periodic table to find the number of valence electrons in each atom. Hydrogen in group 1 has 1 valence electron. Oxygen in group 16 has 6. Nitrogen in group 15 has 5. And carbon in group 14 has 4. So to find the total number of valence electrons, we start with one valence electron from a hydrogen atom, plus six from an oxygen atom, plus five from a nitrogen atom, plus four from a carbon atom, which gives us a total of 16 valence electrons. Since this is a neutral molecule with a net charge of zero, the total number of available electrons here is equal to the total number of valence electrons which is 16. The next thing we do is to calculate the number of electrons needed by each atom to obey the octet rule. We'll need two electrons to give hydrogen the stable configuration of helium, and eight each for oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon to give them stable octets, which comes to a total of 26 electrons needed to satisfy the octet rule. Now we'll find the number of electrons being shared in bonds. These we'll call the bonding electrons. We take the total electrons needed to satisfy the octet rule, which is 26, and subtract the number of available electrons, which is 16. So the number of bonding electrons is 26 minus 16, which equals 10. Now we can determine the number of bonds in this molecule. We have a total of 10 bonding electrons, and each bond requires two electrons. So the number of bonds will be equal to the number of bonding electrons divided by 2, which in this case is 10 divided by 2, which equals 5. So our molecule has 5 bonds. Now we can calculate the number of non-bonding electrons. We do that by taking the total number of available electrons, which is 16, and subtracting the number of bonding electrons, which is 10. That gives us 16 minus 10, which equals 6 non-bonding electrons. So a molecule of HONC has 5 bonds and 6 non-bonding electrons. We now find the possible arrangements which will give this molecule a total of 5 bonds. We start by putting a bond between each atom. This accounts for three bonds out of five, so we need to add two more bonds. Hydrogen is capable of forming only a single bond, so it can't form double bonds. So this bond must remain single. Having one bond means hydrogen is sharing two electrons, so it has the stability of the noble gas helium. One possible arrangement with five bonds is to put a double bond between the O and the N, and a double bond between the N and the C. A second possible arrangement would be to put a triple bond between the O and the N and a single bond between the N and the C. You can see we still have a total of five bonds. A third possible arrangement would be to have a single bond between the O and the N and a triple bond between the N and the C. Our next step is to add the six non-bonding electrons to each structure so that O, N, and C all have stable octets. Remember hydrogen is stable with one bond. We start by looking at structure one. We can add two of the non-bonding electrons, also referred to as one lone pair, to the oxygen. Since each bond shares two electrons with oxygen, the combination of three bonds and one lone pair gives the oxygen 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 2 more, which is a total of 8 electrons. Therefore, oxygen has a stable octet. Nitrogen has 4 bonds, so it's sharing 8 electrons. Therefore, it already has a stable octet. 
Adding two lone pairs to carbon will also give it a stable octet. You can see we've now added all six of the non-bonding electrons we had to structure one. Looking at structure two, the oxygen has four bonds, so it already has a stable octet. Likewise, nitrogen also has four bonds, so it has a stable octet. We add three lone pairs to the carbon atom. You can see that the combination of one bond and three lone pairs will give carbon a stable octet. Again, this accounts for all six non-bonding electrons in structure two. Looking at structure three, we add two lone pairs to the oxygen atom to give it a stable octet. The nitrogen has four bonds, so it already has a stable octet, and we can add one lone pair to the carbon to give it a stable octet. Again, this accounts for all six non-bonding electrons in structure three. So the question now is, which is the best Lewis structure, structure one, structure two, or structure three? In part two of this video, we'll see how the best one is selected.